Hi, I'm Josh Weston, and I'm the Pixel Smith. I am back with a video to help you shop for your blacksmith for Christmas. So I've compiled a list of 10 things that I think will make great gifts for any blacksmith this Christmas. Thing number one. Tongs. Can't hold hot steel without a good pair of tongs. This is a general all-purpose tong. I got this from Blacksmith Depot. Blacksmith Depot is uh, great. They've got a lot of selection. They're a little bit on the pricey end. If you want to save a little money, you can go with GS tongs or you can do Kent's Custom Iron. And those you finish yourself, so you can kind of make them whatever you want, and those are the more affordable option. Tongs, thing number one. Thing number two, hammer. You gotta have a hammer. You gotta have a hammer to work the steel. You have to have something to hit with. This is one of my favorite hammers. It's a German pattern cross peen. You can fuller and move metal real fast here. You have a nice flat face right there for working on fine details. Not too heavy, nice two, two and a half pound. This is a great all around hammer. You can get hammers at various places um, online or shops. You can get a uh, little ball peen. Yep, ball peen. It's one of my favorites. Just little, doesn't weigh that much, and you can get this pretty much anywhere. They've got um, all kinds of hammers at Hammer Source. Uh, and I will have links below and um, in the description you can, you can see these, but these three are my favorite and most used hammers. And it doesn't take much to get a good base of hammers. Uh, if you want to get a really nice expensive hammer and you really want to spoil your blacksmith, Brent Bailey Forge makes a great custom hammer. Um, try him. Um, also, you can get um, really beautiful hammers and tools from Guildworks. And once again, links will be in the description. The next thing on our list, number three, is forges. You have to have something to get your steel hot. This is my forge over here. Uh, this is a custom build from a guy out of Cary, North Carolina and I'll post details to that. But you can also get a Majestic Forge. That's the forge they use on Forged and Fire. You can get a, a Coal Forge. NC Tool has a NC Whisper Forge. Really nice, great mid-range product. If you want a really nice, expensive, master propane forge, go with your Chile Forge. They're amazing. David De La Gardelle uses them. If you're not familiar with his work, look it up. That guy makes beautiful stuff. Get a forge, get it hot. It's a little bit high, you know, as far as expense goes, yeah, it's gonna cost anywhere from $300 to maybe a thousand bucks, depending on what you have. But if you've got the budget for it, go with the chili. The next thing I wanna talk about is anvils. Now, there are some really great anvils. You can get them at Centaur Forge. Uh, they're a bit pricey, and that's okay. They have all different types and shapes available. Great place to get them. The other place you can get them for, from is Anvil Brand, and Anvil Brand has some different options that Centaur Forge doesn't have. Really nice classic shape anvils. And then you can also go with the affordable Grizzly International, or uh, I'm sorry, it's Grizzly Industrial, and they make a $300 anvil and it's cast. It's not amazing. It's not the best product out there, but if you're looking to get started and you need an affordable anvil, why not start with that Grizzly? Get a chain, put a magnet on it, it'll keep the ringing down and you'll be able to forge and get going. Once you get better, sell a few things, then upgrade your anvil later. So, anvils make great Christmas presents. Make sure that when you pick them up, lift with your legs and not with your back, because them things are heavy. All right. Let's move on to some other little grittier stuff. Some stuff that perhaps you could put in a stocking. I guess if you have a really good stocking hanger. And now I'm talking about drifts, chisels, and punches. Now 
I've got a couple things right here. This is a slot punch, and uh, in a slot punch, you take through a hot piece of steel, you hammer it down, and, and you, you make a nice opening that you don't have to use a drill for. It saves you a lot of time, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, this is a uh, hot chisel, and this actually goes in the hardy hole of an anvil. They sell all sorts of these types of products on um, these sites, Blacksmith Depot, Centaur Forge, uh, and there'll be links on those as well. But these, uh, these are great because if you're just working as one person and you don't have that third hand that we all wish we grew, uh, this is it right here. The other thing you can get is a, a little thing called an anvil devil, and it's a little triangle. It's $5. You can get an anvil devil for $5 from Pi Tool Co. And that just sits on top of your anvil and you hit hot steel onto it and it will cut it, it will put vents in it, you can use it to put texture, very cool little things that fit in your pocket and that will definitely not tear a stocking off the wall. Okay, next up, steel. You gotta have steel. And um, if you don't give your smith steel or they don't have a steel source, they'll go take it from everywhere, including train tracks for rail spikes. And that is illegal. It's a federal offense. Don't take railroad spikes. You can buy them online. You can also get great steel. This is my favorite steel. The, oh, actually, this isn't my favorite steel. This is 1075. But I do like the steel. It's a good steel. My favorite steel is W2. And you can get that from New Jersey Steel Baron. It's a little bit harder to work if you're a beginner. You should probably stick to 1075 if you want something a little easier to hit. You know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, stay away from the W2. That way there's more for me. I hate it when they run out. You can also get W2, um, O1, and other smaller chunks. You know, New Jersey Steel Baron, they sell it in these big four foot chunks, so shipping's expensive. McMaster Car has smaller options. You can get some uh, round rods and things like that. Great choice, um, really good steel selection. You can also get it from Jans Knife Making, I think is their, their web address. And they have a real limited selection, but you can get some steel there, and that's much smaller chunks that aren't so heavy. You could maybe put some in a stocking. You could definitely wrap some up and put some under a tree. So, steel. Get your smith some good steel. Let him work with nice stuff this year. It might make you something nice in exchange. Okay, the next thing that we're going to talk about is fuel. We need fuel for our fire. The easiest thing if you have propane is to just hook up to a propane tank. And you can get a propane tank at a gas station, a grocery store, a hardware store. I have uh, one of those really tall tanks, a 100 pound tank that you can get at Lowe's. And uh, I don't know, it was 78 or $100, something like that. And then, uh, expect your average fill up on a 100 pound tank to cost you anywhere from 70 to $90, depending on the market price of propane. The other fuel thing that you could use is coal. This is Royal Oak. This is hardwood lump charcoal. It's not the best coal out there for a coal storage, but this charcoal does work. And I think it's about $24 for a bag of this. If your blacksmith has a coal forge, this is a pretty good locally available option. And number eight is books. Yes, get your blacksmith books. There's uh, quite a few out there that you can get. The Complete Modern Blacksmith by Alexander Weir, Weigers, Weigers, I don't know, whatever. Um, it's a good book, definitely worth a read. Uh, and these are really great things to have at your disposal because the internet is fickle. You don't know if the information you're getting on your Facebook group is accurate or not. These books are proven, they are good, so when in doubt, you at least have something to check on. The Complete Bladesmith, as a, as a knife maker, this is a fantastic book. I've read this over and over and over and over and over again. In fact, I had this book and this book with me when I flew up for Forged and Fire both times and I spent my flight reading these books, going through them, making notes, planning my blades, thinking through my process, and you know what? I won. So, with these books, maybe you could be a champion too. 
the pattern welded blade, okay? If you are taking your skills to the next level, the pattern welded blade, this will take you there. You can make really fantastic looking swords, knives, daggers, um, a lot of stuff from history. And this teaches you how to make excellent patterns. Really good book. I definitely recommend this in your grip. And then for me, because I love the Viking era, um, books like this, Swords of the Viking Age, there's others out there. Get books on the topic of blades that you like to make. And they're out there and they're worth having at your immediate disposal. So, number eight, books. Get books. Oh, also, aside from books, DVDs, right? They're very helpful because reading about something is one thing, seeing another smith make it is another thing. And one of the smiths that I think has excellent DVDs is Jay Nielsen. He put out a series of DVDs with Chris Crowder knives, on um, tips for forging, bowie knife tips, uh, finishing tips, and it, I've, I've heard so many people have been following through these DVDs and they're making excellent knives. Better, I mean, they started not that long ago and they're almost making better knives than I am, just from Jay Nielsen's DVDs. In fact, Kamamura, Neil Kamamura, actually, after eight months of using Jay's DVDs, went on Fortune Fire and became a champion. So, get the DVDs. They're great. They're proven. Walter Sorrells. Can't go wrong with Walter Sorrells. The other person who's making a really great wave and, and has a really um, oakly dokily online course is Alex Steele. So, he's got online um, blacksmithing and he's got various levels of courses. Give him a try. Go through his courses. They're not that much and if you take them, you're going to become a much better blacksmith and you're going to be really happy with your progress in 2018. Number nine. Or uh, if you speak sign language. Shop supplies. General shop supplies. Uh, you need everything from files. A good file. You know, get some files. Don't forge them into blades. Use these files to file things. I use a file all the time and I have probably 10 different files that I use on a regular basis. Get a file. Wire brushes. Look at this wire brush. This isn't going to live for a whole lot longer. Your blacksmith is going to blow through wire brushes like Halloween candy. We talked about chisels and punches, right? I'm going to talk about it again. Get chisels and punches. Soapstone. You can get this in the welding section at Lowe's, uh, Harbor Freight, Home Depot, Ace, True Value. You can actually write on hot steel, and while you're working it, you can still see the line. It's a really uh, actually invaluable tool to have soapstone for your work. Some other things that come in handy are grinding discs. An angle grinder. Almost every shop has an angle grinder. Um, flap wheels, grinder wheels, cutoff discs. Sandpaper. This is a particular brand, um, Rhino Wet. And it's their red line, and you can do wet or dry with these, and they have all different grits. And I find this to be a really fantastic paper. Rags, shop towels, apron, beeswax. Beeswax on everything. If you're blacksmithing something, you forged out a cool bottle opener. Beeswax. You forged out an oyster chucker. Beeswax. Oh, you made a cool little trivet for Christmas dinner. Beeswax. It's amazing. Get some beeswax. It's not that expensive either. One other thing that I, before we leave this section, steel wool. I go through a lot of steel wool. That's for blacksmith projects. That's for knife projects as well. Get the 4 odd steel wool. It's really great. This is it. Number 10, the big one, the most important thing in your shop, safety. And yes, maybe safety should be first, but I put it last here because it's important and I want to make a big deal out of it. Get your blacksmith some safety equipment. A leather apron, a, a face shield, you know, you're grinding. Angle grinders throw off lots of sparks, lots of heat, lots of flying shards of metal. And a face shield really makes a huge difference, you know. Uh, having that face protection, um, 
it, it makes all the difference. I've had so many pieces of stuff fly at my face, fly at my eyes, and if I didn't have this, uh, I'd probably have, I'd probably be blind right now. Let's get a respirator. This year, give the gift of a healthy lung. Because we all want to be able to breathe. Breathing is great. I like being able to wake up and breathe every day. And, and I don't like my lungs to be full of black, gnarly chunks of steel and grinder pit dust. The other thing and final thing is gloves. These are not the right gloves. These are knit gloves. You should get leather gloves. No elastic in the handles. They need to be able to quickly um, kick them off your hands. But leather gloves are great. When you're starting out you burn yourself a lot. When you've been at it for a while, you burn yourself a lot. So really it's about managing the amount of burns that you get. And you can you can stave off some of the burns by covering your hands with gloves. Whew. That was a long list, but it was a good list. And there were some exciting items on there. I know there's some items in that list that I hope end up under my tree and in my stocking. Especially coal. I've been extra bad this year so that I can get coal. I hope you have a great Christmas. I hope your blacksmith has a great Christmas. And I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, if you found it helpful, and you feel well equipped to buy your bladesmith or blacksmith gifts this Christmas, hit the subscribe, hit the like, because you're not going to want to miss our what to put in your blacksmith's Easter basket video. All right, I'll see you later. Have fun Christmas shopping. Uh, avoid the crowds where you can and shop online for some of these things. And um, I will see you soon. Merry Christmas.